This is the all-new Community Connection. I'm your host, Jade Harrell, keeping you connected to our community. To say that E.T. inspires is a huge understatement. He ignites. His intensity, his energy, his passion all come from a place deep within. I'm joined today by Eric Thomas, renowned motivational speaker, top in the world, above average, phenomenal, wonderful person. So glad to have him with us. Eric Thomas joined us on the program today. Hey, Eric. What's going on? That's a lot of stuff. I was ah. tired, like, who's she talking about? You already <laughs> know. And that's so amazing that you say that because among those things, you maintain that knowing because you know where we've come from. Absolutely. Absolutely. But share with us where that passion, that energy originates. I got a second chance. You know, I got a second chance. And unfortunately, you know, early on in my life, I did not understand the value of opportunities. I didn't understand the value of decision making. And um, I made some very poor choices, homeless at 16, high school dropout. And I think the biggest piece to all that was in a strained relationship with my mom. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, you know, talking to my mom, not fellowshipping up with my mom or being, in, you know, in real close proximity with my mom. And I mean, in terms of our hearts, mm-hmm. I'm not really talking about geographically. And so when I got a second chance, I got my GED, you know, found the true ET, started working on that inner man and was able to go to college. I just realized like, wow, I have an opportunity of a lifetime and I need to take advantage of it. So, I mean, that was one. And then, you know, being married and having our first child, Mm -hmm. you know, when my son was born, I said, we are going to break this cycle. Yes. My son is not going to experience life. Like I experienced it, and that's no disrespect to my mom, who was a single parent mom for you know a period of time until she married. You know that has nothing to do. Mom did the best that she could, and you know she really did a phenomenal job. But I just wasn't in a traditional you know family, so um, I just vowed that my son would come into a totally different experience. And so when he was born, I think I went from passion you talk about to igniting mm-hmm. myself first. But a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, what I do for the world, I mean, you get leftovers. This is personal development. This is not, you know, me telling you what to do. This is me actually going through the steps, going through the process. This is me being changed. This is me growing. And then I guess, you know, you give what you have. And so I'm only giving the world the personal commitment that I've made to myself and my family. That's pretty powerful to say that we're getting the leftovers. And of course, we're looking at that like what an abundance. But I think that it's more exciting to know that you had to be filled to give us your leftovers. We're not pulling from your reserves, your half full or half empty place. You had to be filled in order to give us the leftovers. Can you talk about how you filled yourself to be this for the rest of the world. Yeah, I, you know, I think the first thing I had to do was, you know, I had to be honest with myself. In our latest book, Average Skill, Phenomenal Will, I start the book off by saying, look, we have to do some self-assessing. And that's what I wasn't doing. I was, you know, my mom was a teenage mom. You know, mom's got pregnant when she was 17. You know, unfortunately, grandma kicked her out. So she was homeless at a very young age, you know, and trying to find her way. I said, hey, I'm here because of her. You know, she didn't give me the best start. My father wasn't in my life. Had he been there, I would have. You know, I had all of these these reasons for why I was making the decisions that I was making, living the life that I was living. And I had to get to a place and take, you know, personal responsibility. Say, E, this has nothing to do with the people that you're you know, associating yourself with the things, the environment you're in, the things that you're doing, you left home at 16. Now, these are choices that you're making, not to go to school, not to do your schoolwork. You know, you have a home. You don't have to be homeless. I think the first thing I had to do was a self-assessment. Why are you here? You know, and then once I was able to be honest with myself, it was at that point that I knew what I needed to do. You need to start, you know, reading self-help books. I started going, you know, to church. And I tell people all the time, I didn't grow up in church. I'm not I don't know religious tip. I'm on, I need to be in environments and around people who are trying to do something with their lives. 
And I don't think I've ever shared this before publicly, Mm -hmm. but in reality, college had nothing to do with college. I happened to go to a church that did what they call college tours. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even interested in college, but I was at a church and they did college tours and that environment was about college. Like that particular church that I went to, Going to college was big for them. We had um, lawyers that were part of our, our congregation. There were doctors that were part of our congregation, teachers that were part of our congregation. So we had people who, you know, promoted school. And so I happened to be there. And so it was almost like peer pressure, like people are going to college, mm-hmm. you know, and a part of the culture is you go to college. So I was like, you know what? I need to go to college. So they helped me get my GED and sent me there. And so once I got there, I mean, I got inundated with self-help books, inundated with uh, history, Eyes on the Pride series, Martin Luther mm-hmm. King, Emmett Till, you know, the civil rights movement, what our college students were doing, you know, in the movement, the freedom riders. Like, I mean, I just started reading all of this and studying all of this. I was like, Eric, what are you doing with your life? Like, what are you doing? These are opportunities that our forefathers didn't have that they fought for, lost their life for, and it's been handed to you, given to you. Get your life together. Do something. And so, again, I started going to the library, reading every book I could read. I started listening to motivational tapes. I started going to different conferences. I started hanging around and respecting my elders and letting my elders pour into me. You know, so nothing has changed. I'm still doing the exact same thing mm-hmm. over 25 years later, but I'm older, I'm more mature, so I'm able to not only get this information, but I'm able to process it in a way where when I go to the youth detention centers, the high schools, the NFL, the NBA, just, you know, people that I meet every day, I'm able to take this information and plead with them. This changed me. This mm-hmm. changed the course of my life. All I'm asking you to do is at least look at it. And if you don't find it beneficial for your life, I'm okay with that. But if you remotely think that I'm positive, let me take you to the source. It's not E.T. Like, E.T. is not your guy. I want to take you to the books that I've read, the people that have inspired me, the places that I've gone, the things that I've seen. That's the source. And if you can get connected to that source, I guarantee you can take your life to the next level. Mm. I love what you said about, please change the course of my life. Yeah. that you gave them a reason bigger than themselves. See, one of the why questions we ask early on is why is something happening to me or why am I dealing yeah. with that? And yeah. we don't make the connection to it being those choices. But then we don't understand that if we ask the questions, empowering questions like what is my why? Yeah then we can take that to a whole nother level. Another yeah. question that goes with why is how. And you found along your way the how. Now, I heard you say through reading and being exposed to information like Eyes on the Prize and Civil Rights, and it clicked to you that there was something more for you to do. Yeah, you know, again, modeling. You know, so as I was reading, I was doing more than you know, just reading the book itself and looking at the book from, you know, what is the author trying to get across? What are they saying to us? I also put myself, you know, in that, like a bird's eye view. I'm sitting there asking myself, okay, I know Martin Luther King didn't, but why? Mm-hmm. You know, why would a man who had a PhD at like 26 years old had a career? Why? Why, mm-hmm. why would he risk his life? You know, why would he do it? Why did Mother Teresa do what she did? Why did Gandhi do, like, not what they wrote about, but why did they do it? Mm -hmm. And I realized that you really can't be successful if you're selfish. If you really can't get to that next level of self-actualization, if it's all about you, my house, and my car, and my stuff. (laughs) And I started looking at the people that I looked up to. And I looked at that, not just what they did professionally, but what did they do? And I realized that they all were givers. Bill Gates, Mm -hmm. he gave the world access. It was a time where computers were only in corporate America. You you weren't in corporate America. You didn't have access. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates gave us access. Steve Jobs. I remember being a kid, the phone was connected to the wall. Like, you couldn't leave the room, let alone get in the car (laughs) with a phone. They gave us access. And I started to see that the most power 
poor folk. The richest people in the world are people who give. Mm -hmm. And so I realized there is no way for you to be successful if you don't give. So what do you have to give? Well, you're a high school dropout who got a GED. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the GED because people always think, you know, you got to do something big. They got to do something grandeur, mm -hmm. you know, colossal, you know, something magnanimous. It, that's not the truth. Start where you are with what you have for what you have is plenty. And I literally started my career teaching young people how to get a GED. But I tell people all the time, this is much bigger than a GED. Mm -hmm. I didn't teach them just the academic skills that they needed. What I taught them was the resiliency that they needed, the non-cognitive skills, the ability to bounce back, um, grit, will, finding your why, goal setting, you know, time management. Again, I didn't have necessarily the academic skills at that time, but I gave them what I did have. And by giving them that, you know, I became known, radio, TV, you know, and then this opportunity opened up and then that opportunity opened up. So I literally knew that the how was to give away what I had. And if you only have one gift, give the one away. If you have two gifts, give the two away. But what I noticed when I was in college, there were kids that could sing, but you couldn't get them to do it. It was like pulling teeth. There were people who did poetry and, you know, they had oratorical skills, but they wouldn't do it. Right. You know, all they were focusing on is going to class, graduating, getting a job and blowing up. And I knew that you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. So if you give your gift away, then not only are you going to be a blessing to others, but those blessings that you gave away to others are going to come back to you. So that's how I did it. I looked at what I had, didn't have a lot, but I knew how to get a GED. So I helped kids get their GED and I built influence in the community. And a young man by the name of John Starworth, uh, who used to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm -hmm. owns an engineering firm. After my kids would graduate, he would give them a scholarship to get into Alabama A&M. So um, just, you know, whatever you have, it doesn't have to be a lot, but whatever it is, give it away. What was that, the mantra that you mentioned before with that? Because I do want to commit that to memory. You don't have to have a lot, you know, but give, you know, what you have, you know, because that's, again, that's what people think, that they think they have to have a lot. And I knew that give what you have, Ed, but what you have is plenty. You know, just give it, what give. you have is plenty. That's it. That's yeah, it right that's there. It. But today it's plenty more. Yeah. And our lives are being transformed yeah. all over the globe, yeah. Eric. That has to feel phenomenal for you. How do you see you today? As you did before, you mentioned you're doing the same thing, but certainly I know that you have modeled and have seen the model of others. How do you see you today in the scheme of things? You know, it's weird. It's too old. <laughs> I think, you know, I think for me, what has changed is social media. So, so when I say I was doing this, you know, years ago, I mean that the work hasn't changed. But, but of course, what social media does is it keeps it alive. Mm -hmm. You know, it keeps it alive. But when I look at myself, and, and in no way do I put uh, myself in the same category, you know, as a Malcolm X, a Martin Luther King, a Marcus Garvey, you know, Rosa Parks. Why you know, wouldn't you? The truth. Um, I would dare say that, you know, I am on their level, but I will say this, that the responsibility that they took for uh, bringing about change, I believe that that's what I share, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what I get excited about is that I have had a measure of success. Uh, and I don't have to, as you know, we come to St. Louis, I'll be going to a few of the uh, detention centers, speaking to the youth. I'll be going to some of our high schools and speaking to young people. I don't have to do that kind of work anymore. I don't have to, you know, regularly do TGIM anymore. You know, I don't have to every Monday commit to doing videos, the podcast, et cetera. These are things that I don't, you know, from a financial standpoint, I don't benefit. But I'm excited about the fact that I've taken responsibility that I realize a lot of these young men don't have fathers in their lives and for whatever reason they've decided that I am their role model and they look to me you know as an example so I take pride in the fact that the level of responsibility that Malcolm took that Marcus Garvey took that Rosa Parks took that Sojourner Truth took Harriet Tubman you know Martin Luther King I take that same level of responsibility and say hey these are my babies you know these are my kids this generation is my generation and like so many you know 
individuals. I am responsible for helping them to get to one place to the next. And I'm excited because this will be the first year that a part of our proceeds from our uh, conference is going to go to uh, Vashon High School. Uh, There are a group of kids who need passports and need money to travel to Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put a number of kids in a position financially uh, because their you know, parents are not in a position to help them or their community. You know, we're going to sponsor them and give them an opportunity to get out of this, you know, get out of America, get out of a 10 mile radius of their home, you know, and travel the world. So we are extremely excited about that. Very excited because it was actually being exposed to a broader world. And I remember from our previous interview, you said books took you there that helped expand your horizon and see that there was way more to experience and give and encounter. Now, the surprise was going to be, hey, everybody, he is here and in, in St. Louis for the Average Skill Phenomenal <laughs> World <laughs> Tour. But you let the cat out of the bag, and I know my phone is going to be ringing off the hook, but I don't want to go without including that you said you dare not include yourself in those categories, and I'll say that you very easily should. We are talking about a relative time and place for people that are in need of this hope and inspiration Absolutely. and Absolutely. this push. So please do not deny yourself that because in my eyes you are and we respect you for that so tell everybody about your visit this is the first time my family and my eta family uh, will be blessed to come you know to st louis and put on our average skill phenomenal will conference and actually this is the very first stop you know of of the new year there are some things that have um taking place, you know, in our communities. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, you know, people, you know, question me sometimes, you know, ET, what you're saying? You know, again, I think that, you know, you need starters, you need people, you know, in the middle and you need people, you know, who are going to finish strong. And uh, I've decided that, you know, I'm not into sensationalism. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are about the grind every single day. And so mm-hmm. I'm excited that we've been doing some work in the St. Louis area for some years now. Yes, you have. But bringing our conference there and p- making our presence known and letting that community know that, here, we're here for you. We love you. And we're going to do something about it. We're going to make sure that a group of students uh, get educated about the opportunities, not just the opportunities that are local, uh, but international opportunities, mm-hmm. the opportunities to learn different languages, the opportunities to see third world uh, countries, the opportunity to see how other people live, the opportunity to expand your mind, because once the mind is expanded, it will never return to its original dimension. And so we're going to mm-hmm. do our part in helping the Missouri community by uh, planning You know, our presence there when we leave, we'll start a chapter in that area, and we're going to do our part to give kids skills, whether it be oratorical skills, you know, whether it be engineering, math skills, you know, language skills. We're going to do our part to say, Missouri, we are here, we're here to stay, and that we haven't forgotten you know, about the tragedy in Missouri. We haven't forgotten about our babies all over the world, you know, who are in need. So we're excited about coming. And uh, when you talk about igniting, we yeah. are going to bring the noise. <laughs> and um, we are, going, like I said, our presence will be felt. Uh, there will be an aftermath after we leave. Oh, for and sure. We, yeah, we'll continue to make St. Louis a part of our agenda. For sure. And we will continue to keep that flame burning. Average Skill Phenomenal Will Tour is happening this weekend, and ET will be training you on exactly how to achieve the desired results in both your personal and business life using Phenomenal Will. What exactly is Phenomenal Will? You know, Phenomenal Will, again, is that grit, you know, that resiliency that many of us, you know, are familiar with when we watch our grandparents. You know, I watched my grandmother, you know, she raised 14 children on her own in a two-bedroom uh, house in the south side of Chicago, you know, without having a doctorate degree, you know, or I don't even know if my grandmother had a high school diploma, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. But we watched Grandma take little and make much out of it. That's right. You know, uh, right. we watched her survive, protect her babies, you know, and we watched our uncles and aunties and our parents, you know, grow up, you know, to do phenomenal things because, you know, Grandma taught us never give up, never give in, 
you know, and use what you have to get what you want. That's right. You know, and so that's what it is. There is this this other you, this inward you that many people have not tapped into. And we want to show them that, listen, it's not about starting, you know, where you want to start in life. It's not about, you know, uh, being affluent. It's not about, you know, uh, having, you know, the greatest network or the greatest re- resources. It's about grinding for what you want and knowing that it can be yours. Mm-hmm. You know, that, you know, you find a man as diligent at his work. You know, he'll stand before kings. You know, Martin Luther King said, if you sweep the street, sweep them like Michelangelo painted pictures, you know, like okay. 120. And so we're going to teach people that the level of effort that you put forth is more than enough to make up for seal. And if you're fortunate enough to be very sealed, then if you add a phenomenal will with there that seal, oh, you, it's <laughs> astronomical. The success astronomical. you have will be astronomical. For sure. Well, it wasn't his phenomenal skill that allowed Eric Thomas to alter the course of his life it was his phenomenal will and he will share those skills and tips and training and strategies with you so you can do the same the main event is held in the bank of america theater at harris stowe state university that's even more of an accent on this whole theme and idea special vip session will be held from 2 to 3 30 before the main event starts at 4 and immediately following the main event there's an optional book signing session i don't think optional should even be a word there. If you want this book, the tour is named after the book. And don't forget about the album that can keep you on your grind that you That's can right. also get. That. That's right. Not me, man. Not me. Matter of fact, I need to get a copy to accompany this interview and to run on a regular basis. We'll bring it with us. We'll Do bring it with that. us when we go. Because I will be there. Me and Sean will be there just yeah. bright and ready to go. February 21st, 2016, proceeds benefit the Show Me Costa Rica Project and the Kwame Foundation. Foundation. For tickets, visit etinspires.com slash conferences. Average skill, phenomenal will tour happening on Sunday. <laughs> ET, thank you for sharing oh, that time, you. your thank energy. You. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you for having us. Thank you for always being down with us. We're looking forward to seeing you. And again, St. Louis, I promise you, 2016, you know, it's going to be our year. Absolutely. All right, that's it for this week. If you have questions or comments or have something you'd like to include in the community calendar, you can leave a message on our message box at 314-333-8369, 314-333-8369. And for more information about our show or any of our guests, you can visit us online and listen to the podcasts at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And search Community Connection with Jade Harrell. You all be blessed, do blessed, and take care.